part one, I showed how Lyric can be used in a traditional way of providing character generation and animation. But adding Lyric Pro can improve your workflow with intelligent transitions and persistent messages, which will enhance your existing graphic design. Let's go back to the lower third super with the static bar that we created in part one. With Lyric Pro, we can very easily add more animation to this message with the ease and precision that you expect from Chiron. Let's add this bitmap to the canvas. Scale it a little, and then place it along the top of the red bar. I'll also extend the timeline out to 5 seconds. At time 0 on the timeline, let's move the flare off to the left using the XYZ properties. Now move the timeline marker to 3 seconds, and then move the flare off to the right. Navigate to the transition property and check the loop box. The flare will now animate across the red bar in the first three seconds of the timeline, and then two seconds later start, our, start all over again. Finally, move this object into the group that was previously made. Now when I play this to the output, you'll see that this simple static lower third now has some life with the simple animation that was applied. A variety of transitions are standard with Lyric, such as dissolves, cuts, and page turns, but with Lyric Pro you can also design your own. Four separate timeline transitions are provided in Lyric Pro that make messages interact with each other without having to know how to do any kind of scripting. From Lyric's timeline, I'll right-click on the default timeline tab, select Add Transition, and then Effect In from the pull-down menu. Because the group is selected in the scene graph, Click the radio button beside Select It. This will automatically add the group to the effect in the timeline. Now with Lyric Pro we think of animations in sections. We're only concerned with how the lower third animates onto the output at this point. As in part one, we can keyframe a starting point and an ending point to this animation. You'll notice that the target flare is automatically moving across the screen. Its animation was created in the default tab and then put into this group. We're only animating the group in the effect in. The start of the animation is now complete. Right-clicking on the default tab again, we can select Effect Out from the pull-down menu, and then check Selected here to add the group. A new timeline is created for the Add Effect now, and at one second, I'll make a new keyframe by moving the group off the bottom of the canvas. Two separate animations are now complete to animate the lower third on and then off the screen. For similar messages, I want to build in a transition where just the text will animate and the bar will stay in place. These are called update effects. To create these, once again, I'm going to right click on the default timeline and then add transition and select update in. Because the text is not highlighted in the scene graph, leave the empty radio button selected. While we're at it, let's go ahead and add the update out as well. Now highlight the Update In Timeline tab. Open up the group and highlight the text. Navigate to the Transition Properties tab. Notice the 2D text is also highlighted in the Update In Properties available box. Click the Add button to add the text to the active box and it also appears on the timeline as well. Let's do the same for the Update Out Timeline. Click the Update In Timeline tab and we'll create the transition animation. For this animation, the text is to be faded up on the new incoming messages. Navigate to the surface properties, set the alpha to 0 at time 0, move the timeline marker up to 15 frames, and then set the alpha to 100%. Now let's select the Update Out Timeline tab. For this animation, I'll move the text to the right and fade it out. So at time 15 frames, the text is moved to the right using the X position in the XYZ properties, and in surface properties the alpha is set to zero. To make this message complete, go back to the transition properties and give it a name. In this case, we'll call it lower third. This message is now complete and we have designed our own custom transition. Let's animate the first message onto the output. Read the same message, and then uh, we'll change the text and then it'll perform the custom design transition when played on the output. When the last message is finished, a blank canvas will either animate the message off the output, or better yet, a different looking message will animate the lower third off, while the new one animates on. 
In the final part of this section, I'll create and add a persistent message to the output and combine it with the lower third. Let's add a running clock to the lower right by clicking on the clock toolbar button here in Lyric. Let's set it so that it displays hours, minutes, and seconds. Drag the clock to the lower right of the canvas. And now navigate to the transition properties and check the persistent button. Let's just give it a name here as well. I also want to make sure that the clock is always on top of the red bar. To do that, all I have to do is give it a higher scene priority by moving the scene priority slider to 2. The clock message is now ready to be a persistent message on output. You might ask, how does an operator know if a message is persistent? Well, that's shown here by this blue infinity symbol displayed to the left of the message on the scene tree. So let's put the clock on the output and now add the lower third message to it. It really is that simple. You've just witnessed the beginning of what Lyric Pro can provide. With Lyric Pro, multiple messages can be displayed on a single output with persistence. Stunning animations can be created with intelligent transitions without the need for custom design scripting. Lyric Pro is a must for every broadcaster.